big energy cliff here from down under. And this video is going to be part two, looking into dial indicators and dial indicator stands. Cheers. A lever indicator is a lot more sensitive and has less stylus pressure than a plunger indicator. A plunger indicator has usually a lot more travel and it's um, because it's got a plunger and a rack and pinion it is much more accurate for measuring distances especially long distances but it has a lot more force because you've got sliding friction over a much bigger area versus pivoting friction with a lever indicator over a much smaller area and so the spring force uh, to balance that with a plunger indicator has to be much higher and so the actual spring pressure hopefully you can see that on a plunger indicator this the Smitatoyo plunger indicator is about a hundred grams of spring pressure whereas the lever and indi lever indicator pressure uh, spring pressure is around about starting at about seven grams and coming through to at maximum maximum uh, measurement of about 15 grams seven to 15 grams that's that's very good it's got a very long lever that gives it um, more sensitivity the Swiss lever indicator has a shorter lever and the pressure starts at about you can see there is more like 20 to 30 grams and the Mitutoyo is sort of varies from the start to the end but 20 to 40 grams and that sort of range still a lot less than a plunger indicator of around 100 grams but you know to be fair that's a point in favor of the Chinese Shahi indicator it is very sensitive and has very low stylus spring pressure and you might think well what's the advantage of that well it's very handy when you're dialing in a Hamer probe tip or a, um, a touch probe you don't want it, the spring pressure flexing your job you might have a slender job in the lathe you want to dial in um, or a slender uh, cutter that you want to check for concentricity you don't want a heavy spring pressure interfering with the accuracy of your measurement a light finger dial indicator is an essential tool for dialing in the concentricity of your probe stem or your hymer concentricity uh, you don't want a heavy plunger style indicator because it's going to cause some deflection especially if you've got a light flexible uh, probe this is a fairly stiff probe stem um, but just to show you have a look at the needle now while I bring it into contact you can see there it's causing a movement of one or two hundredths of a millimeter so if you had the Tormac SPU 40 probe with a more flexible stem you'd probably be getting a movement of two or three times that you know as much as one or two thou and so you're not going to get accurate concentricity with a plunger indicator you need a light finger indicator such as this Shahi if you're not familiar with this type of dial indicator stand you must get one they're just fantastic and a big step up on the, from the earlier designs that had multiple um, clamp screws this has one clamp screw and it locks it really solidly in any orientation you can use them position your dial indicator in a few seconds and it's rock solid it's a very good design I think it was Noga's invention a few years ago and the Chinese copies work pretty well it's a very clever design there's two uh, ball swivels at each end and a central single clamp screw that pulls a tapered shaft uh, and actuates two internal push rods very good idea very good design um, I think Nova and Israel have originally invented the design and they've been copied uh, by different manufacturers in China and they're quite good they work quite well they're not as refined as the Nova 
uh, original version, but they work quite well. Um, there's, there's this small size here, which is good for a lot of jobs. And then there's the bigger size, like the bigger Nova uh, stand there, that sort of size. That's um, handy for other jobs where you need a bit more length. Well, when I bought this uh, Chinese copy, I bought it from the Shahi, where I bought the dial indicator. The Shahi uh, website was the approved uh, Alibaba Shahi uh, selling outlet. And they also sold these uh, dial indicator stands. Um, but I thought that would be better quality because Shahi is one of the better brands of the, of the lower cost Chinese products. And I thought if I get this stand from them, it may be made by Shahi or sourced from a manufacturer in China where the quality is a little bit higher. So I paid extra. It was another 5 or $10 more. Um, and I, want, I was hoping that it would be better quality, but it wasn't. It was no better than this cheap one that I bought previously. In fact, probably not quite as good. And, and it was a little bit loose on the thread here. And I tightened it up and immediately it stripped uh, it was a very cheap and nasty soft metal thread. So then I had to tap it out from the M5 to M8 and fit a, a high tensile insert and Loctite it in in order to fix it. Um, and the quality is pretty poor. If you look at the uh, grinding on the V here, I don't know if you can see it, but it's all sort of squint. It works okay and the magnets work okay, you know, um, but it's... Uh, not of good quality. It'll probably be okay, but you know, I if you can afford it, get the proper Noga unit. It's probably um, four or five times more expensive, but it is a much better quality unit. Forgive my pronunciation. I think the original Israeli unit was Noga, N-O-G-A, if you're looking it up. Um, then there's a decision, do you get the one with the fine adjustment? Have a look there. That's very handy uh, just for making the fine adjustment and zeroing your dial. But there's a downside to this. If you're going to use your dial indicator horizontally for an allayed type situation for clocking concentricity from the spindle to the tailstock, for example, or gang tooling, then this will flex under gravity and it won't be a good feature in that situation. In that situation, you'd be better for, with one that doesn't have the fine adjustment and you'll get less gravity sag. Well, the first job for the Shahi indicator and stand. I've talked about this quite a bit in other videos, how you can make your three-jaw chuck able to be dialed in concentric. What I haven't mentioned is once you've dialed it in concentric, it's usually concentric for all diameters. Um, and uh, you don't have to do this each time, but just per per time you make an adjustment. So here we go. We go to the maximum position there. We get the block of copper on the top. Give it a bit of a tap. On a big lathe like this, you don't have to worry about the bearing so much. I'm a bit backhanded here shall we say holding the camera but there you are got that pretty close now you get the idea anyway I'll finish it off off camera so all you do is you just loosen off the uh, in this case there's about eight screws on the back plate and um, prior to that I'd machine clearance of about a millimeter on that spigot ring you don't need it to locate I've never had one shift because um, you've got a big clamp surface area. Clock it true and then lock those up and uh, you hardly ever need to use a four jaw chuck if you use that method and your three jaw chuck is very accurate. It will repeat on the same diameter concentric every time. If you've got an error in the scroll and you are clamping on a different diameter you may need to dial that in if you want to get better than a thou or so. But it is infinitely adjustable. So there we are, Mr. Shahi, doing very well on the first job. Alright, that's it for now, folks. See you next time. Cheers.